Hi, and welcome to another episode of Making Things. Today I'll show you how to turn a free junk scooter into a zipping, convenient, and awesome electric scooter. So what did I do here? Well, what I did is I took one of these relatively inexpensive uh, lead acid scooters, the 24 volt lead acid battery scooters. You can get them for free in the trash or 50 bucks used usually because people lose the charger or the batteries die because, well, they're lead acid batteries and they don't last. And what I'm going to show you how to do is how to gut it and transform it to use uh, power tool batteries or your own custom lithium battery pack if you want. And the advantage of this is they go 50% faster, last probably two to three times longer. And not only that, in this case, batteries are swappable. You just swap them out and you can go for as long as you have batteries. And while you're riding, you can charge these on what are usually 30 minute or one hour chargers that come with your power tool batteries. If you want more details on the types of batteries, how I made the actual battery harness, the crimping of the Anderson power poles and all of that. I've actually got more details on that in the instructables. What I'll be showing in the video today is more how to open it up, gut it, and rewire it with the harness. So for the details on that, you can go and find more details on the instructables. So the first step is going to be to take this top plate off. So these are actually different lengths in the front and the back. In fact, all of these screws are slightly different. Um, not sure why. Now, since I'm probably going to be replacing these because they're a little bit rusty, I'm just going to test the short one in the front, see if it works. It does. So when I go to the hardware store, I'll probably just be getting these what are these three quarter inch, maybe one inch screws? It'll be good enough. And then this time I'll get some stainless ones, replace these, and uh, make sure that it's easily accessible in the future when I need it. Now, once you get to the back here, they're actually nuts and bolts rather than just screws. It's gonna be a little bit harder to take out. Again, some rust. I'm going to be oiling all of this before I reassemble it. As well as replacing the screws with stainless. Alright, so what do we have here? You can see, well, obviously we have two batteries. These are 12 volts each and they should be in series, which means that we have a 24 volt system. We already knew this from the model. Over here is a controller. This is what uh, actually along with the throttle regulates the max amount of amps that will be delivered to the motor. So we're going to want to jimmy these loose. So these are still live. The important part in doing something like this is you don't want to touch the wires once you've cut them. So you don't want to be cutting both of them at the same time. Otherwise you, you, you are going to be making a contact and I mean, best case you're going to make a few sparks. Worst case you're going to weld your snips uh, to the wire. Um, so there's actually a fuse box down here, which is good, as well as a switch. And the fuse box is connected directly to the battery. 
power then goes through the fuse to the other battery and then out the battery and back to this con connector here. So something we can do is just remove this, save ourselves a little bit of trouble. This is the wiring that goes to the motor. Probably just disconnect this directly as well. There, that's going to save us a little bit of fiddling around. This was my negative lead in. And my positive lead is right under it over here. Actually a little bit of a pain to do, so I'm going to leave it on there. It's important to label your wires as you're removing them. Um, in this case, I'm recording it, so it's pretty easy for me. The C5 connector is where the power goes in. Red and black, that's standard, so that's good for us. As far as this goes, it's not as important how it's labeled. It's a fuse, so it's pretty neutral to how the power goes in or out. Since this was actually in the middle of the battery, rather than at the end, we're actually going to have to change the way this goes through a little bit. Um, which is fine because I want Anderson connectors anyways instead of this. I've been thinking this over and I think that the best way to do this is going to have I'm going to have the red terminal be just a direct Anderson connector to my battery and the black terminal is actually going to go through the fuse and then to the battery so that the if there is a surge uh, since it goes from the negative terminal to the positive terminal, uh, it'll reduce the chances of frying everything if the fuse blows quickly enough. Time to operate. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, separate the batteries. I'm going to keep myself a little bit of extra wiring here, but I'm actually not going to need all that much. So just in case I want to reuse the batteries, I'm going to make my life easier and get two equal length wires. This is where you might want to be careful. You know, if you try to snip closely, this could have touched the contact. There's a little bit of metal at the end. And there you go. Removing the batteries that simple. Not that complicated. It's not very dangerous either, as long as you're careful and you just do it one wire at a time. Um, the one thing you may want to do though is make sure the contacts can't touch. So this is a really dumb and easy way to do it, but now they can't touch. Or you can put a bit of tape at the end, which is probably safer, but I don't have any with me right now. I've got plenty of place here for a custom pack, but for now, I'll be moving over to the design with the external battery pack, which I'm actually going to probably hang on the on the neck somewhere, just in a in a bag. I forgot we're going to need this guy back. Just because it's the right connector for the fuse. In order to do a nice job, I don't want my shrink wrap to shrink by accident, so I'm going to put it on the longest wire because I can just push it out of the way. So in order to do a nice job, I can actually do a nice, kind of just put the two into each other and twist. That way, you, and the reason for this is just so you don't end up with a, you know, a lump. Let me take this out of the way. So you don't end up with a lump 
and uh, it's not going to break whatever you put on it to, to protect the um, protect from shorts. So when you have a, you know, if you put the two wires side by side and twist them like so, uh, you end up with really sharp bits. And I found that I've accidentally torn through the protective barrier of whatever I was putting over it when I've done that. So. These little guys for a quick good job on higher gauge wiring. Wait for the contacts to cool. One. So, just back on here. Let's not forget to insulate this little joint we made. That's it. It's just nice and snug. It's not going anywhere. These are usually rated to either three or six hundred volts. Either way, not an issue for us. And put this back in. And now. The next big part is figuring out how where we're going to get these wires to come out from. Um, that's mostly a personal choice depending on how you set yourself up. You know, if you want it in the case, then it's pretty easy. That's where the, the battery is going to go. Um, if you want it to be in your backpack, you might want to run the wires a bit longer and get them coming out of the back. Um, but I'm going to have them hanging out from the front. So uh, I actually hadn't noticed that he had stopped filming on me. Um, but luckily I didn't miss much. Essentially what I did is I went and I got my battery connector. If you don't know what this is, it's so I can use power tools for just about, uh, power tool batteries for just about anything. If you want to know how to make these, check out my instructables. Um, so the only thing I did was that I keyed the Anderson connectors. That means I connected them in the way that they plug properly red to red, black to black. If I try to put them the other way, they don't fit. If you weren't very good at that game where you put the triangle in the triangle hole and the square in the square hole, don't worry. Can't screw this one up either. All right, so there's actually a slight problem with my plan, at least as far as running the wires up here. I'd forgotten about the support bar. That's why that gap is there. So I don't want it coming out in the middle of the board. I don't want to step on it and break it. So what I'm actually going to do is just drill a little, little hole on the side here and just pop it out. That simple. Don't need these fancy sheet plastic and metal bits, but if you have them, these step bits are definitely a lot easier to work with. And we don't actually need to make a hole the size of the two uh, connectors, only big enough to fit one connector through it, because we can detach them, reattach them on the other side instead. So, there you go. Right 
size. Oh yeah, nice clean fit. But big enough that, I mean small enough that it absolutely will in no way risk falling back in when we don't want it to. Helps if you feed the wire back a little bit and since it's so snug, just have a bit of slack to feed the wire and the connector together so that you're not rubbing against the wire with the connector. Instead, you're feeding both. There you go. Now make sure we key it properly. Yep. Voila, and it can't fall back in. There we have it. Well, time to finish up the harness for the batteries, the extension cord, and wait for the rain to stop, and we can test this puppy out. I'm actually not quite done yet and sure enough my little temporary battery harness whew, took the wayside at the end there I was actually quite surprised at how well this worked uh, for my for my pilot run but gotta say huge success